Another reason why ridge regression and least squares are really powerful is because you can kernelize them. You can actually take the data, send it to an infinite dimensional reproducing kernel Hilbert space, and do regression there. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. Um, it's not actually as easy as you might think. There's actually a trick you need to do to get everything in terms of inner products. So let me first write down uh, ridge regression's objective and then I'll show you how to do that trick. Okay, here's the trick. We, we don't have everything in terms of inner products, right? This term, that's particularly bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace lambda by x transpose times r. And now our objective is going to be in terms of r. And if we can get r, right, if we can minimize this objective in terms of r, then we can get back to lambda because lambda is x transpose r. OK, so let me just write that really quickly. OK, so now my objective is in terms of R. OK, guess what? We now have inner products. So this matrix here, that's actually a matrix of inner products of all the x's against each other. So let me just show you that by looking at the sizes of all of these matrices. Um, so x, that's the that's our standard data matrix. So that one is n by p as usual, right? You have observations along the uh, rows and features along the columns. And that means x transpose must be p by n. And so this is n by n. So now hopefully you can see that this is actually a gram matrix, the kernel matrix. So we've kernelized it. Now we can simply replace it with another kernel, uh, another gram matrix from another inner product. As long as it's a valid uh, kernel, we're good. Okay, and then just to do the rest of these, uh, just to do the rest of these um, uh, sizes here. So this is n by one, and this is um, n by one here. And so that thing together is n by one. So it's an n by one vector minus n by one vector. Okay, great, good. Okay, neat. So now I can replace this xx transpose with the kernel. Kernel in my whatever space I want. Okay, so now for, for this one, for this term over here, I still have to show you how I can do that. But that term already naturally kernelizes because it's squared. So let me show you how that happens. It's a little bit of matrix manipulation. So I'm just going to write this norm as the inner product squared. This is just the inner product, standard inner product um, of two vectors, OK? So there's, there's nothing fancy here at this point. And so um, that standard inner product means you take the first one and transpose it, and you multiply it by the second one. So let's just do that really quickly. Okay, so now the transpose of a product is the product of the transpose. So um, let's just write this out. So this is actually R transpose times X, uh, transpose, transpose, hmm. Transpose, transpose, cross those out. All right, so then this is times X transpose R. And now guess what? What we have is the inner product of R with KR because K gets to eat all of these um, x gets to eat x x transpose. Cool. So now we can write fr just in terms of the inner products. No more x's, just kernels. Wonderful. Okay, now what we need to do, as you know, is take the gradient and set it equal to zero so we can solve for r. So uh, 
but let's go ahead and do that. This time I, I will do the whole gradient at once. All right, so this has to equal zero at our star. And we just need to solve for that. Okay, so let's do it. Now, the first thing we got to notice is that all of these terms have a 2k in them. So we can actually ignore the 2k and just set everything else to zero. So let's, let's do that. Okay, one more step. We just have to invert the matrix. And there we go, that's it. All right, so we got it. So this is our solution. And then remember, we have to get back to lambda star, but that's easy because um, we, we know that lambda, that, that lambda star is just x transpose times r star. So I'll just write n, remember. Lambda star is x transpose times r star. OK. So that's the solution. But there's still a few things that uh, we want to talk about. So for instance, if you have mapped to, uh, you know, through the kernel to a different space, and you don't actually know what the map is, then this procedure is actually not possible to do. So we need a way to make predictions that just goes through the kernel and doesn't require our knowledge of the, the map, okay? Because we would have normally had to take X and map it to the feature space to do this transformation, but of course that is not available to us when we use kernels. So we have to figure out make, how to make predictions. And then the other thing we want to be able to do is um, Understand why, I mean, this this thing over here, that's not the same as the ridge regression solution we derived. So um, let's try to reconcile what the differences are here. All right, so first, first things first, let's figure out how to make predictions using this. So I'm gonna grab a new page here. Okay. All right, so let's write down that we're gonna make a prediction at a new point X. X tilde. Okay, so we need to compute F of X tilde. And of course we know the formula for that is X tilde times lambda star if we were in the original space. We have to map to the kernel space, okay? So what do we know about uh, lambda star? Okay, we know that um, we can write, actually this guy, uh, we can write that as the sum over i of x i transpose r i star. Okay, cool. That's a better star. All right, so I can actually, like this is, that's a dot product and it's just a sum over i. Okay, so um, I can actually use that to help me out. So it's x tilde sum over i, xi transpose ri star. Now you can see where I'm going here. I've got my inner products. Sorry. Okay, so now I can replace them with kernels. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to call this k of x tilde i. It means the same thing. This is just slightly different notation. And so I can write this as k transpose x tilde r star because it's like, this is like, this is the sum over i right there. It's that dot product. Okay, cool. So what I end up with, oh, I forgot. I'm going to actually write down our, our star in here. Okay, so our star is k plus ci inverse y. Okay, so that's what f of x tilde is. We've got it. So there's our prediction. There we go. And of course, everything is in terms of kernels. And we knew that was going to happen because of the representative theorem. But now we've actually got the solution. And again, we've now mapped to reproducing kernel Hilbert space with no optimization necessary, just a matrix inverse. And it just happens to be the kernel matrix. Cool. Well, it's this matrix here. In any case, now we know we can do ridge regression in um, reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces. And we can make predictions, and they're all fine. Okay, so the last piece of this is to figure out why r star and lambda star look different than um, the ones we derive for ridge regression. And uh, for that, I've placed a proof in the notes. And don't worry, indeed, this, this solution actually does, uh, does reduce to the ridge regression solution in the case where the kernel is uh, just um, the standard linear kernel.